you guys. This is D Edwards. I am the master coach and president of the Startup Business Factory, where I will assist you with moving from idea to execution to building a profitable, sustainable business and a big old bank account. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and thank you so much for catching the replay. So listen, on today's video, I am super excited to be hosting the Lunch and Learn series on today because we are going to be discussing the different types of funding for your business. Oftentimes when individuals start a business or after they have been in a business for some time, they are looking for an additional funding or capital. Um, so I want to share with you those different ways that you can obtain the, the funding that you need in order to start, grow, or expand your business. So thank you guys again for to get to tag someone in this video because there have been just so many questions about funding for your business. And some of you all are sitting on some amazing ideas right now and you feel as if you don't have the funding that you need in order to, to start your business or to grow it or to even expand your business. So hopefully some of the things that I share with you today that it is going to help you with moving forward in your business. So I wanna say thank you so much Yvette and Princess Nini and Dee Lynn for joining us on today. So before thinking about about getting funding for your business, it is important to understand that the easiest way to fund any idea is to, is to fund it yourself, like out of your own funds, out of your own money. That way you don't have to worry about paying anybody else back. You can loan yourself the money and also pay yourself back with interest. And then just in case something doesn't work out in your business, it's best that you owe yourself than having to owe other individuals. Hello, Christina. Thank you so much for tuning in. Hey, Nicole, thank you so much for um, tuning in. And also, um, it's also important to understand that it's, it's easier for you to finance yourself or to loan the money to yourself, especially if you don't keep good uh, records or if you don't have a good um, or strong financial uh, document system. So when you have to loan money to yourself, you don't have to worry about going through all of the processes that other companies or people may take you through, okay? So when you're looking for funding, oftentimes individuals, they wanna see your business plan, they wanna see your financial statement. So you have to have that in writing. Oftentimes as business owners, especially those who look like me, we don't do well when it comes to clear being able to articulate the vision in writing, or if we can uh, get the vision in writing, then we may lack the ability to have the financial records that we need in place. And um, oftentimes when other individuals are going to sow into your, your vision, or um, if, if you're, when you're looking for funding, they are going to want to see projections. So basically projection means that they want to see over a year's time, how you are going to uh, uh, make your money back and how you're going to pay them back, how the company is going to profit. So just keep that in mind when you are thinking about different funding opportunities opportunities. Uh, thank you guys so much for tuning in. So one of the things that I want you to quote me on, and I wrote this down, is if a man manages his his own money well, then he can be trusted with another's man's money. So I want to say that again. If you can feel me on that, I want you to give me a few hearts that if a man can manage his own money well, then he can be trusted with managing others' money well as well. That's, that is a statement that you guys have to keep in the forefront of your mind because people, that's why they ask you for the business plan and for the financial records because, um, because investors and in banks and, and other companies and even individuals, they believe that if you don't know how to manage your money well, then you are not 
not going to manage their money well. So you have to be a good steward because if you've been wasteful with your money, when they start to look through your financial records and they start looking through your bank statements, wondering whether or not you've been commingling funds, if you've been stealing from your company, then you're more than likely are not going to get the funding that you need. That's why it's important that when you establish your business, that you separate your funds, separate the account. You need to have a business account, and I don't care if that business account only have $5 in it, start your business account and only run business transactions out of that account, because this is the way that you're starting to build credibility with individuals that you may have to borrow from. This is a great way for uh, uh, individuals to see that you are a good steward over a little amount of money, because if you're a good steward over little, then you can be ruler over much, okay? So let's go ahead and um, um, get started a little bit, okay? Um, something else that I want to share with you guys um, also, that when you are starting out as a first-time business owner or as an entrepreneur, sometimes it can be uh, very difficult to get the funding that you need for your, for your business. So if you are able to obtain funding for your business, there's a few things that you have to keep in mind. One, you have to maintain your credit. And I know oftentimes people are so big on building business credit, which I believe that you do need to have business credit, but when you are getting business credit initially, they are going to look at your personal financial records. They are going to look at your personal credit. So I don't know where you are in your business. If you do not have good credit right now, then you need to start working on building your credit. You need to work on, on getting your credit score up. And the higher your credit score is, the lower your interest rate is and the more amount of money that you can qualify for. So if you want to learn about um, just managing your credit, if you want to learn what it would take in order to build your credit, you can go to mycreditmattersnow.com, mycreditmatters now.com. And, and that is an online program that I have created to teach entrepreneurs and business owners how to manage and to increase their own credit score. Having good credit tells you a lot and tell, tells you a lot about yourself. Then it also tells creditors a lot about you as well. So if you don't have good credit, there's still funding options that are available, but they, they look for collateral. Okay, say it with me, collateral. Collateral means they want to know what are you willing to give up in exchange for their money. So for instance, if I wanted to borrow $10,000 from the bank, the bank may say, conditionally, you can borrow the $10,000 if you put up the title to your car or if you put up the title to, to, to some piece of collateral item, okay? So it is important to understand that you need substance and you have to start preparing now for where you want to be. That's why it is important that you pay those extra payments on your car note so that you can go ahead and pay your car off. Um, um, or whatever that you owe to people. You need to go ahead and, and pay it off so that that item can be considered an asset instead of a liability. So if you're making monthly payments to anybody on any item that you have, um, let's say such as a car, right? That your car is not considered an asset yet because technically it does not belong to you. Technically it cannot be collateral because on, on your, on your documents, guess what? You don't solely own it yet. You and the company that you purchased that vehicle for, from is, is technically joint heirs of that vehicle until you pay it off in full. So right now you are driving a borrowed car if you owe money. And so it's considered a liability and not an asset. Okay. And so it cannot be collateral. 
So I hope that I'm helping somebody today with understanding how important it is to get your personal situation together before trying to borrow, uh, uh, borrow, borrow money. Because here's the thing. Nine times out of 10, if you've been wasteful with your money, you're going to become really wasteful with somebody else's money. It's almost like with using a credit card, a credit card, whatever your limit is. Let's say if your limit is $1,000, if it's $2,000, do you understand that that money is not yours? It is borrowed. So whatever your credit limit is, that's not your, that's not your money. And so if you're using it to the max, uh, if you're using it to the max, you're maxing out your credit cards. Uh, that that means that somewhere in your personal life, you haven't managed well what comes into your hand, what belongs to you. Therefore, you struggle with managing what belongs to someone else. That credit card limit. Okay. So I hope this is this is really helping you all. And I'm not here to condemn. I'm just trying to help you all understand how this whole funding world works and what they are looking for in order for you to get the funding that you need. OK, so today I am going to be discussing with you the different options for funding your business. So that was like an introduction uh, to help you start preparing now for where you want to go. The worst thing that could ever happen for you is that an amazing opportunity come up the opportunity that you've been praying for the opportunity that you've been wanting and you don't have access to the capital and you cannot go and get it because of your credit or because of how you manage your personal uh, personal assets or manage your personal uh, funds your personal credit okay so that's why i wanted to do this lunch and learn series so that you can start making great choices and great decisions about the um just about your business and about your life and i want you to make those decisions with the end goal in mind not the not the beginning not where you are today you got to make decisions with the end goal in mind if i was to take out this long how will this affect me what is the end goal what is the purpose of of me swiping my credit card? What is the purpose of me spending um, or buying uh, that dress or those shoes, okay? Because, because somewhere along the line, when you are building and you have the end goal and when you have your future in mind, you're gonna have to make some type of sacrifices in your life. So that may mean that for six months, I can't get my nails done. That may mean for six months, I can't get my hair done. However, the end result is that at the end of those six months, I'll have a, a, a new car that's paid for. I'll have, a, I have the down payment for my house i'll have the money that i need to start my business like you have to be willing to make sacrifices and let me tell you this when you are looking for funding for your business you do know that they want to know how much of your own money that you have put into or you're willing to put into your business venture because if you're not willing to invest in your own business if you're not willing to put up something um, in your business, then more than likely other people are not going to want to invest at all because they feel like if it's not important enough for you to give to the vision, then why should they give to the vision? I'm just telling you guys what, what they have looked for in my own process. When my husband and I have had to get business loans and business financing, I'm letting you know what, they, what they're looking for. If, if companies are willing to, or banks are willing to put up $50,000, you best believe that they're going to want a huge percentage of that they're going to want they're going to want a huge percentage of your funding to, to match theirs. Okay. And what they will require um, oftentimes is that you move the funding amount that they're asking you to put into the project into their bank. So I need you, to, need you to understand. So for instance, if you're borrowing $50,000 from a bank, right, to to go into a project or if you found a, a building let's say you found a building 
okay? The building is 200 and some, th 200 and some thousand dollars. Please understand that the bank will not oftentimes finance the 200 some thousand dollars. They're going to ask you to put a down payment of a huge amount or and, and or they are going to ask you um, how much money you're going to put into the project. Okay, so I just want you guys to keep things like this in mind. All right, so let's get into the juicy part of funding for your business. So the first thing, um, the first way to get funding for your business is through loans. And there are different types of loans that you can obtain when you are, when you're looking for funding for your business. So the first type of loan that you may qualify for is a bank loan, okay? They can provide small, medium, or long-term finances and the terms are generally much shorter than a house or or um, a mortgage payment so um, most people some people get financing for their mortgage anywhere between 15 years to 30 years and oftentimes they take out a 30-year mortgage right and if they're taking out a 30-year mortgage on a house when it comes to the commercial or the business side the terms are much shorter they may they may the the financing terms may only be for like five years and then they ask you to pay a balloon payment so Let's say in five, let's say hypothetically you borrow $10,000 and you have a five year term. At the end of that five year, let's say that you've only paid $5,000. So there's a balance of $5,000 that's still owed at the end of the term. So the balloon payment will be that you have to come up with a lump sum of $5,000. Okay. All right. So I hope, I hope that makes sense okay so if you're looking to obtain a bank loan be sure to understand the terms of of the agreement just understand the terms the apr the interest rate just um understand if you have to put up collateral what are they at what are they asking for when you are doing a business loan now a business loan can also well well funding can also consist of a business credit card Okay, a business credit card is where you use your EIN number versus your social security number and you apply for funding. So there are times where people will use credit cards to get the funding that they need because the process for credit cards is normally it's easier than it is going through an entire bank loan. So if you're going to apply for a business credit card, you're going to have to make sure that the structure of your business is in place, such as having uh, separate business accounts, making sure you have your EIN number, your company may have to be registered. You'll just need to um, you, you'll need to reach out either to the banks or you can use lenders such as American Express, you can use MasterCard, you can use uh, Capital One, uh, they, Chase, they have great terms for business credit. So keep that in mind. And then also there is a business line of credit, okay? So a business line of credit is different from a business credit card, okay? So I hope you guys are following me that you can get funding from a business loan, you can get funding from your business credit card, you can get funding from a business line of credit. And if you can't qualify for a business line of credit, then they may give you a personal line of credit or they may give you a personal credit card instead of a business credit card and then you'll use those funds as you although it's personal you'll still use those funds for your business so basically a line of credit is like um a, a line of credit is the the bank look at your financial records and they say hey we will qualify you for a two thousand dollar uh two thousand dollar business line of credit and they'll give you the terms business line of credit is normally paid back differently than a credit card the interest rate is different and so so you use the money that's on your line of credit to purchase not not for like 
like buying potato chips. You may use your business line of credit for payroll. You may use your business line of credit um, to purchase an apartment complex or a commercial building. So you can use your business line of credit, but the terms of repayment for the business line of credit is, is definitely different from a business credit card. So just understand the terms when you are looking to uh, finance for, uh, and, 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 and what I want you to do is to compare the difference between a business line of credit and also a business credit card and determine which is best for you, okay? All right, so a business line of credit is not like what's swiping it. It's more so for your big, bigger purchases. Okay, so I hope this is making sense for you all. This, um, the next way that you can obtain a loan is through family and friends. So first of all, mixing business with pleasure can easily, easily ruin a good relationship. Okay, so when you are borrowing money from family and friends, you have to ask yourself, am I willing to risk the relationship in order to get the funding that I need from my friends or family members? And sometimes it's not even worth the hassle. But it's important that if you borrow money from your family or from your friends, that you treat it as a business transaction. So that means that you're going to keep it professional by having a business agreement agreement written up, you're going to have a business agreement written up, or it can be drawn up by an attorney. Um, and, and you're going to have a promissory note. You're going to have the repayment terms. You're going to have whether or not interest is included with, with, uh, with with the money that is being loaned from your family members or being loaned from your friends. You can um, have the documents notarized. And I like to tell people that when you borrow money from family and friends, it's important that you have three signatures. You're going to have the signatures, have your signature. You're going to have the signature of the person or persons that you are borrowing the money from. And then you're going to have the signature of a witness. Uh, you, you need a witness. Okay. You need a witness because you always have to think and this is the sad thing when it comes to family and friends and people that you know. What if something goes wrong in this transaction? And I may have to take this person to court, okay? So when you, when you draw up agreements, it's, it's not saying that you are, well, the agreement may say that you're, you're going to take them to court. But when, when you borrow when you when you borrow money, you you are giving that company or that person the option to take you to court. So, for instance, there are times where I could have taken individuals to court, and I have taken individuals to court, right? And um, it was based upon the agreement. I could look at the agreement. My attorney can look at the agreement and say that we have full right to take this person to court, to sue, to stop them from going into business, all kind of stuff. What are you wanting to do? The contract give you options, okay? And so just make sure that you understand the terms of agreement when you are uh, borrowing money from your family and friends. And just make sure that it completely spells out um, when the money have, have to be repaid the interest rate and all of that other detailed stuff, okay? The third way is online lending. I want you guys to hear me when I say this, okay? Online lending is a great way for you to get the funding that you need from um, for your business. Online lending is, is much quicker than getting money uh, from a bank loan. Okay, it's much quicker. And it, it's, it's normally like filling out an application online and they can have the money in your account within 24 to 48 hours. And oftentimes they will look at your personal credit with the online lending from your company, but it's, it, the process is easier. And so I know some of you guys may be asking, well, where can I find online lending? So I'll give you guys two places where you can get online lending for, for your business. The first one is own.com. That's O-N-D as in David, E-C-K.com. The second one is cabbage.com. Okay, cabbage, you know, like the cabbage that you eat with a K instead of a C. So it's K-A-B-B-A-G-E. 
www.bankofamerica.com. Okay, those are two places where you may consider online lending and go through a quicker process than going through the banks. Okay, the the next place where you may get a loan from is from the SBA, and that's the Small Business Administration. The Small Business Administration is a federal agency um, that is committed to helping small business owners obtain the financing that they need. And so they have special lenders that they work with, and the Small Business Administration, they guarantee they're backing you up. Okay, they're backing you up. They normally can negotiate terms of your of of your of your loan. They can normally get you a lower interest rate. But the reason why a lot of people who look like me don't like going through the SBA is because they are going to want to see your business plan. They're going to want to see your projections and they they are they're going to hold you accountable in a way that a lot of us don't like to be held accountable. Too. But the great thing is that the Small Business Administration, they will help you with getting the documents together that you need. Okay. D. Lynn said, if, if a woman manages their own money well, yes, yes, yes. You got to be willing to manage your, if you can manage your own money well, then they can trust that, that you will manage their money well. Okay. All right. So um, the Small Business Administration. Okay. So the next way. So we talked a lot about loans. Okay. The next way is investors. Okay. So investors is basically someone or a company who is vested in the success of your business. And so what they do is they'll give you their funding for something. So they give you money for something and they are normally are going to want a percentage of your company. Okay, they can they they're gonna want a percentage of your company. They're gonna want some, or they're gonna want some um, some form of your revenue. Okay, and I want you guys to think of Shark Tank. Think of Shark Tank. Okay, so those are investors. Damian Jones, he's he's an investor. Okay, so he's going to bring investors bring their resources, their tools, and help you become successful in your business because they are basically partnering with you. They are vested in your success. So um, investors are a great way to get the funding that you need for for your business, and um, just make sure that you understand the terms. Just don't let me tell you. Just don't be signing documents because you can be signing over a huge percentage of your company and you don't even know it right so just just make sure that it just makes sense for where you are because somebody may ask you for 30 percent of your company but with their resources and their tools and their funding maybe they can help increase your revenue so much so that the 30 percent is not gonna not going to hurt you at all so just make sure that you just understand you know the terms and that it makes sense for you okay so the next one is an angel investor so we have an outside investor so an outside well, first of all, we have the investors. So there are different types of investors. So one is an outside investor. Um, just an outside in, uh, investor is basically like a, a company, okay? So there are, there are investor companies. And so basically, they want to make sure that you have a, a good business plan and that you understand your numbers when it comes to outside investors, okay? So that's basically like, uh, just a just a company that you may have seen on Facebook and you see that they in, invest Okay, so they they may be interested in your business idea or they may be interested in what you have going on Just make sure that you understand the terms. The next one is an angel investor angel investors They normally want a stock in your company Okay, so they may not want pre, a, a percentage of your revenue, but they may want stock in your company. So um, an angel investor is very similar to an outside investor. Now, have you guys ever heard of a venture capitalist? Okay, venture capitalists. A venture capitalist are basically in, uh, individuals who review, who assess and invest in new and emerging ideas. Okay, so for instance, I may be a venture capitalist for someone. 
Okay, someone may come to us and propose an amazing business idea. And so we'll review the idea, we'll, we'll review the assets, and we'll determine whether or not we want to become a venture capitalist. Okay, venture capitalists can also be companies. They don't have to be individuals. They can be companies as well. Okay. So the next way that you are going to get funding for your business, I hope this has been great for you all. I hope that this um, information has been has been good for you. So if this has been good for you, be sure to give me some heart so I know that I'm, I'm talking good to you all and that you understand. If you have any questions, Vicki, Barbara, Tanya, Latasha, if Nini, if you guys have any questions, be sure to post your, your questions below and I will get to them live or I will go back and answer your questions, okay? So the next way to get funding for your business is through crowdfunding, crowdfunding. You guys may not have known that it's called crowdfunding, but you see it. And that's the GoFundMe campaigns, the GoFundMe campaign. Okay. So crowdfunding is where uh, you have an online platform, it's various platforms that you can use to have multiple people so into your vision. Okay. And it's almost like, free money, but the online platform normally would charge you a fee for the amount that is raised. Now with crowdfunding, it's not as easy as a lot of people think that it is. It's not as easy as just putting it on your Facebook page and say, hey, I want you to make a donation into my business. People have to, one, believe in you when you are crowdfunding, and then they have to believe in what you are offering. And then when you are crowdfunding, what are people going to get out of you sewing into their vision? Okay, so those are the three things that you need to think about when you are crowdfunding. But depending on what you are doing, especially if you have a business and organ, if you have a business and organization or like a nonprofit, then crowdfunding may be great for you. And a few crowdfunding uh, platforms that a lot of people are familiar with is GoFundMe.com and Kickstarter. Okay, GoFundMe.com and Kickstarter. And then there's another one called Crowd, Crowd, C-R-O-W-D, Rise, R-I-S-E dot com. Okay, so you have GoFundMe, you have Kick, like you kick, Kickstarter.com, so CrowdRaise.com. Okay, and you just have to choose the one that is right for you. Okay, so the next and final way for you to obtain funding for your business is through grants. Okay, and so government grants are options, but you normally need to work with a grant writer if you are going to obtain a, a, a grant, or you could do it yourself. Some grants can be simple. To complete or some can be just very detailed they want to know the demographics of the people that you are serving they want to know the race the age they want to know really really great details and then they also want to know how you're going to distribute the funds when you when you obtain your grants okay and so there are organizations and companies that provide grants there are national companies like Best Buy Walmart Target those companies have grants. Your bank may have a grant that you can apply for, okay? And grants are normally in the in the larger amounts when you apply for them from organizations. But then you may also have small business owners who offer grants as well. As you guys know that right now, uh, we have partnered with the Celebration Church and we also have others who have um, vested in us giving away scholarships and it's called give give me another chance scholarship for 2018 graduates so 
um, small companies like us. So don't shy away from small companies when you are raising money for different ideas, okay? But when it comes to the government grants, um, just understand that this can be free money, but they do have stipulations, okay? So if they give you the money, they may want you to send in documents. They may want to come and view your location. They may have people to come in and spy. They may have um, other individuals to come in and review your paperwork you know just be sure that you read all of the stipulations before you apply for the grants okay now if you want to apply for a federal and state grant program there is one that is called minority business development agency so you can just google that minority business development agency or empires State development okay so for instance if you live in the state of Alabama like I do there are different grants that your state may offer your city may offer the federal government may offer okay so there are just different different ways to obtain obtain grants and you need to understand that so let me so I live, well, we do business in Birmingham, Alabama. So Birmingham may have a grant, and they do have grants. They do have fin fi financing options for small business owners, too. They do. So Birmingham can have a grant or a loan program. The state of Alabama can have a grant or a loan program, and then the federal government can have a grant or a loan program. So that's three different entities that you need to look into to see if you qualify for a grant or a loan with a really great interest rate, okay? All right, so there are private grants that are available. I kind of talked about when it comes to small business owners or, you know, when someone pass away, they, they start these um, scholarship funds or they start these grant funds, right? So those are called private grants. And um, I'll give you guys a couple private grants that you may want to look into. One is called Chase Google. Chase Google. C-H-A-S-E, Google, G-O-O-G-L-E, <laughs> -O -O okay? Google that. Also, FedEx Think Bigger, they have grant program. Also, you can look into SCORE. SCORE is an agency that helps small business owners with start growing or expanding your business, and they provide tons of free resources. They, they provide mentorship. They provide help. So they'll actually partner you with someone in an industry that you want to go into or that you're already into, and then they can come in and evaluate your business. They can look at your records. They can give you um, different ideas on and, and what it's going to take to grow your business. Business, okay. Um, also, the Elaine Fisher Women's Owned Business Grant Program. So that's E I L E E N Fisher Women's Owned Business Grant Program. And then you know what? When you are looking for additional funding for your business, let me tell you this: make Google your best friend. Make Google your best friend. I believe this, if you have an idea, if you're in business and it means that much to you, getting it off of the ground, don't, don't be afraid to just ask. Open up your mouth and share your vision with others. Give people an opportunity to sow into your vision. Right now, my husband and I, next week, we are starting a GoFundMe page because we are, we are building a small business hub that is not for us. It is 
for the community, is for small business owners and entrepreneurs, business professionals. And we're giving individuals an opportunity to sow into that. It's not even about us, but it's about sowing into that vision. You have to create opportunities where people want to sow into your business because there are people who are even on your timeline, who's on your, who's following you on social media. They're waiting on a great opportunity to support you, but you got to give them a reason to support you. They got to see your work. You have to work hard so you can start producing the fruit of your labor that's going to make people want to give. Okay? To make people want to give into your vision. And you just have to talk about your vision. And I know a lot of times, I know you guys are probably saying, well, I know folks on my timeline, they get tired of me talking about my vision, blah, blah, blah. No, no, the right person. They need to see you talking about your vision. And one day they're going to grab hold of it. And even if they can't support you, they can recommend someone who can support you. There are companies, there are organizations, there are people, do you understand me? They, there are six-figure business owners, seven-figure business owners who need to give money away every year in order to get a tax write-off, okay? In order to get a tax write-off. So you are helping lowering to lower their tax liability and then also their funds is helping you with your vision but you got to talk about it you got to be making moves you got to be doing something you have to work you have to exhaust yourself in your vision working hard making the sacrifices that you need in order for you to get the funding that you desire for your business People are not going to give funds to individuals or to companies who are not showing progression, who are not doing anything, who are not willing to put in the work. you got to be willing to put in the work in order for this to work for you. Okay? All right, so this is D. Edwards, you guys. I hope that you all have learned a lot about how to obtain funding for your business. And I know that I shared a lot of information with you all today. And um, it is not about utilizing everything that I've said on this video. It's about choosing what's right for where you are in order to get the funding that you need to start, grow, or expand your business. Okay, but I want you to also remember that if you are going to 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 ask individuals for money, if you are going to uh, if you're going to get the funding that you need, you best believe that you need to be willing to prove what what you're willing to do in order to get your business off the ground. Okay, so right now I'm going to look and see if you guys have any questions. Oh, I was saying crown oh i'm sorry i was saying crowd crowd with a d crowd raise okay let's see okay they're saying that they needed this information that this was good thank you so you said yes exalt yourself yes you 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 get you got to get tired yeah you got to get tired if you're not tired yet then you're not working hard i mean i need you to go home at least a couple of days out of the week and and be tired from working in your own vision do you understand me and i always share this with you guys is that i literally i get up every single day and i come to my job and my job is me employing myself my husband he gets up every single day and we are employing ourselves but we work as if we are working for somebody else so that means that we work a nine to five in our own company we work hard how dare you start a business how dare you believe God for great greater for growth and for expansion and you're seeing your butt at home not working in your business yes you should get your rest but yes I, I don't want to rest until my business is like set up it's set up to where the vision can sustain itself all the successful people that are millionaires that I know that the six-figure business owners that I know they work as hard as I do and some of them work even harder 
than I do. So I'm saying work hard, but work smart, work diligently so that you can get the funding that you need for just for your business. Okay. I just want you guys to know that people are not going to sow into your business. If you're not willing to put in the hard work, if you're going to ask us to sow into your vision, I need to see you working and you're grinding. I need to see what you've done with your own money. I need you to be able to just really prove that you are worth others sowing into your business. Oh, as I'm talking about this too, uh, uh, something else just came to mind. Also, you guys can create a product or even a low cost product. Or you can do a, um, what's, what's the right word? You can create a product line where you can save that money from that product or that product line to go towards your business, right? So for instance, let's say if, if you said that I'm going to sell cakes every Monday, okay? So on Monday, the money that you obtain, the profit that you, you obtain from baking cakes, put that aside to start your, your, to start your business. But you have to be disciplined in order to do that. And sometimes you have to be willing to do something that you don't want to do in order to position yourself for the things that you, that you need to do, right? So for instance, some of you all may need to take on a part-time job in order to reduce your debt so that you can position your business better. Some of you all need to take on a part-time job where you can save that money to help you start your business. Okay. Recently, my husband and I, we met with um, a very wealthy individual who doesn't look like me. And he said he had to come up with $25,000 for, for his business. And we asked him, how did he come up with the $25,000? He said that he took on a part-time job and he hustled and he worked really, really hard in order to do it. And so guess what his daily life is like now because i asked him i said well what do you do on a daily basis because you're busy man you you have all of these co these companies under you what what does your daily business look like he said well i go to my office which is separate from his business so he goes to his office and he prop his feet up drink coffee read the newspaper watch tv look over some reports and then he go home See, he was willing to do the work initially in the beginning. He was willing to work hard and to sacrifice in order to get to where he is today. And what I find is that individuals who look like me, they want to do all of that in the beginning. No, you can't prop your feet up like, like, like he can or like someone who's been in business for a long time. You can't prop your feet up. You just got, you just got started. And every time that you start a business, you have to put in that same energy for that new business venture, okay? Right? Now, you, now it may get easier because you may have discovered a formula for your success, but in order for your business to get into the hands and into the eyes of the right people, then you're going to have to go hard, okay? And my final tip that I want to share with you guys today about, about, funding is don't be afraid to call companies how many of you all have telemarketers contacting you right now asking you to donate or to give why don't you become your own telemarketer every day say i'm going to reach out to 10 organizations i'm going to reach out to five organizations okay understanding who the decision maker is getting the telephone number and the email address for those individuals making contact coming from behind your desk getting in the streets going door to door building relationships with people okay if you're going to build like you desire to build in your heart you need, you need to do the leg work. You need to do the leg work. Get from out of your bed. Get out of your house and go network. Go sit in a public place. Go sit at, at Books a Million. Go sit at Barnes & Noble. Go sit in a co-working space. We have City Club here. 
I'm a member for City Club. Sometimes my husband and I, we just go there to eat breakfast or we just go there to see who else is there, who, who we can network with, who we can mingle with. Get out of your own way and build this business like you truly desire to. Do this because you have to realize that you're not building this business for yourself. You're building this business because you want to position your business to create opportunities for somebody else. That's your entire goal and mission in life. If your business is all about you, you're not going to make it long. But when you can make your business about other people, woo, when you can make your business about helping other individuals, then you have come into a gold mind. That's when you know you are on your journey and you're on your road to success and discovery. Okay. Cheryl said that I am past tired. I work the client's home, advertising paperwork on top of paperwork, created products for home care individuals. That's right. Exalt yourself and then use some of your funds or your fundings to hire other people so that you can start working on other parts of your business because you have to decide there are different weeks or different times or different seasons in your company when you have to work in your business then you and, and, or work on your business. And so you have to discover where you are. Are you at the point where you can work in your business? Are you at the point where you are working on your business? Okay. <laughs> Sonia said, Coach, let me work for you part time. Girl, I can't get no work done around you. <laughs> Yeah, become your own telemarketer. Yes, yes. Can I have a mug that there's one on the table for my born bliss? <laughs> you want that one? <laughs> I'm gonna have to go. I'm gonna have to send 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 you one or the funding for one. Yeah, Sonya said, do the lead work. That's right. A gold mind, not gold mind. That's your word, D. Yes, a goal. G O A L mind, not a gold. G O L D mind. Got it? So thank you guys so much for tuning in today. I pray that this has been beneficial. If you're just jumping on, be sure to catch the replay that you guys have heard something that ignited your fire, something that you're thinking about, ways to um, increase the funding for your company or to gather the capital that you need in order to birth this business, in order to get your organization, your ministry off of the ground. So until we meet again, think bigger, retire, generate continuous profits. And I can't wait to see you guys at the top. Don't forget to invite someone to be a part of the startup business factory. Have an amazing day. Toodles. Bye, you guys.